in Chicago is allowing patrons to look at porn now. Um, or as they've been calling it in libraries for years, National Geographic. <laughs> Brooklyn Magazine, which, yes, is actually a real thing, <laughs> has been reporting recently that witches are the new hipsters, if you guys didn't know. And I actually kind of agree with them, because they are the original homebrewers. <laughs> and both hipsters and witches wear unnecessary floppy hats. A lot. <laughs> this is very exciting. Uh, NASA? is searching for space taxis to uh, taxi astronauts back and forth uh, from Earth and space. Uh, this is really exciting news for the space program and uh, really, really terrible news for black astronauts. <laughs> That's just really, really terrible news. It wouldn't be a show right now if we didn't talk about Rob Ford. Uh, crack smoking Rob Ford, Toronto's mayor, earlier this week, uh, got his own TV show, which is just him going about his daily life, and uh, it's called Two and a Half Men. <laughs> I just hope there's people in like a hostel in Germany who are right now are just like ripping off their little Canadian flag off their backpack <laughs> and putting an American flag on it for the first time ever. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, this is a big story a lot of people have been reporting. Uh, defensive end for the Jacksonville Jaguars ripped out a giant chunk of an opposing player's head, uh, dreadlocks, during the middle of the game. Not his head. <laughs> ripped out a giant chunk of dreadlocks from an opposing player. Uh, a lot of people have been reporting this, but absolutely none of them have our exclusive photo of the victim after the game. Uh, oh, this is, this is a great story. Uh, this is good news for the NYPD. Uh, they have finally arrested the Park Slope groping suspect, and uh, I don't know anything about that story, but what I like about it is that in Park Slope, even the criminals look like they live in Park Slope. <laughs> you may have heard that mothers across America have been saying social media like Facebook and Twitter have been dumbing high school students down. We've taken celebrity tweets, because high school students love tweets, and we turn them into SAT questions so they can learn at the same time. And this is the segment we call Essay Tweets. Uh, I just want to go over four with you guys really quick. So let's get going. All right, the first one is from Bell. Oh, by the way, these are all real tweets. Uh, the first one is from Vanilla Ice, and, and the tweet is, I want to see all the Ninja Turtle costumes this year, so send me some pictures, and I will tag them. The SAT question is, which phrase best describes the author's use of capital letters? Is it A, word choice? Is it B, word play? Or is it C, word to your mother? I'm gonna go with C there, because that's in all caps. Yeah. I think we all feel smarter already. Our next tweet is from Dr. Phil. This is a real tweet. This is totally real. If a girl is drunk, is it okay to have sex with her? Reply yes or no to Dr. Phil. Our SAT question for that is, the author is A, asking a rhetorical question. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt here. B, using an extreme to position his argument. Or C, Headed to a high school party with a case of spring. <laughs> I'm gonna go with C again. I'm gonna see a pattern emerging here. Our third tweet is from Jaden Smith. Uh, Will Smith's son, you all know him from the Karate Kid. And After Earth. It's your birthday, Mateo said. I didn't respond. Are you not excited to be 15? He asked. Reading my book, I uttered, I turned 15 long ago. <laughs> I honestly don't even know if I need to do the rest of this one. That's just an amazing tweet. <laughs> the, the SAT question is, the narrator of this story is A, first person limited, B, third person omniscient, or C, a real asshole. <laughs> It's 
definitely see you, there's no question about it. We would all had ace our SATs. And finally, we have one more tweet for you guys tonight. This is from Cher, and it's my favorite one. If you guys are not following Cher on Twitter, get out your phones right now. Cher said, okay, rant. I have an amazing friend. Came from Mexico, no English. Got great job, raised amazing kids, paid four things in cash. Got direct TV. That's the American dream in 140 characters right there. Our question for Cher is, the author's main argument is, A, scattered. B, we all should talk like Tonto for the low range. Or C, laws banning immigrants from direct TV are unfair. Let's go with, let's be honest, all three of those are accurate. I especially like C, or B. The book is 28 essays by different women writers, um, and every essay is inspired by Joan Didion's essay by the same name that she published in 1967 in her collection called Slouching Towards Bethlehem. Um, although not all the essays are by people who have actually either left forever or right. ever left New York. And there's one essay by Roxane Gay who never moved to New York. So. <laughs> and it's amazing. So 28, and by the way, this is the classiest the show has ever been. We're talking about <laughs> fucking Joe Gideon. How did you come about the idea of this, and how did you put it together? Well, eight years ago, my husband and I got kicked out of our Avenue B loft. And so you're, how much rent were you paying to live in these buildings? Oh my god. We had an 1,800 square foot loft on 8th and B on the park that we were paying thirteen fifty four in 2005. Wow. And then first the landlord jacked it up to 2000 and he was charging us cash above our rent. And then he tripled it. And then wow. Michelle Gondry got the apartment after me. So. Really? <laughs> An asshole. There were probably Legos everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and back then, probably you would like, almost never come to Brooklyn, I'm guessing. When back then, when friends would invite us to Brooklyn, it would be like, um, no, it's really safe. It really is. <laughs> and um, one night, I, my cousin was visiting me from D.C., and we were going to a party in Park Slope, and my uncle, his father, called and said, please don't go to Brooklyn. Whatever you do, don't go to Brooklyn. Do you, do you sit and think about, like, what would I be doing in New York now if I'd never left? I do. All the time? I do. Well, you know, Actually, I was doing okay. We, we spent a year in housing court before we lost our apartment, and it was a really great way to be able to leave the city pissed off. <laughs> so, so it made it easier to leave, but then over time, for like the last year and change, I've been heart sick, and I think about it all the time. You've also been focusing on this book, which is all about yes, New York City. Yes, I have. I know, this book really fucked me up. <laughs> Really fucked me. I like in, in reading this. Uh, I have been here only four and a half years, and uh, I pretty much have been trying to leave since like <laughs> the day I got here. Like, the thing to me is in the breakups of the city, it kind of makes me love the city more. Everybody that I know that lives in New York City has a love hate relationship with it, and it is that kind of city. It's like really high stakes. You have to give up a lot to get that excitement and the opportunities. It's like, you, there's, it's yeah, a you've called Yeah, you've called the city a bad boyfriend. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of times, right? I definitely have, everybody has. I, I, Buy the book, read the book, read Joan, Joan Didion's essay, and then go on WMIC and listen to uh, Matt Dillon uh, do a <laughs> reading of it. <laughs> does he know? Yeah, he, no, seriously, he does. Like, there's a selected shorts of Matt Dillon. Yeah. Oh my god. Wild Things era Matt, Matt Dillon, Dillon doing Joan Didion. Matt Dillon, who lived in my fucking apartment. <laughs> jo Matt Dillon, Wait, really? didn't, he, after Michelle Gondry, Matt Dillon lived in my apartment. Oh, that's weird. You just made me really mad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Biden, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? I, I met you, um, we had uh, meeting. Mike Morona, uh, who plays Big Pete on Pete and Pete, uh, came on the show and he was the sweetest, nicest guy. And uh, Jason came along to the show and yeah. you, you actually put me through like a kind of intense Nickelodeon quiz because, <laughs> because when I met Mike, I was like, hey, thanks for coming to the show. And you were like, hey, who's that? 
And then he looked at you and you were like, yeah, who am I? That's right. He and I grew up together. That's the, that's the spec story. Yeah, we, we talked uh, that you guys went out for a lot of the same New York kind of red-headed roles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, really, really, though. I, I would never... <laughs> when you'd sign in, you'd see all the names you remembered, and then you'd be like, oh, shit, who's this interloper? Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> who's the new guy? Yeah, so we, it was a little fraternity of, of 11-year-olds. So the casting directors, you know, they know who's, who they want to bring in, and so they're yeah. constantly bringing in the same, they're like the small Rolodex of, of red-headed short kids, you know? <laughs> when I was <clears throat> 7 through 10, 11, 12, I was going on somewhere between 5 and 10 auditions a week. Wow. Yeah, leave school a little early. The school was, you know, accommodating in, in this respect, and go to the city, just pound the pavement, go back home, do homework. That's, that's, that was my little, that was my career when I was an eight-year-old, nine-year-old. What I love about that is, uh, Sari, who was on the show earlier today, a lot of the essays in her book are about people in their 30s and 40s losing jobs in New York and leaving. Uh, you opened this interview talking about how you're pounding the pavement working as a six-year-old in New York. <laughs> You uh, worked as a family member and artistic director of a theater company in Portland, correct? Yeah, there's a long gap in between there, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some reruns in between, but... For which I was not paid. Really? Mm. Still, to this day? Yeah, never. Never a dime. Really? Yeah. Wow. No residuals. It wasn't um, foresight in the contractual... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, s uh, signing, you know, it was Which is ironic because your character would have had that voice. <laughs> <laughs> he was obsessed with Reagan and Dan Quell. Yes. <laughs> These are just Bushwick words. <laughs> I don't even, like, did you even know what that meant at the time? The politics have, have been interesting to me for a long time, so. It's actually a career that I, I think about heading towards at some point. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, do you want to make an announcement? <laughs> <laughs> Not unless I, I just did. Uh, <laughs> I was, um, I, I, I was, uh, I, I read an article from Nintendo Power in 1991 last night. Um, <laughs> really. I'm very glad. You and Melissa Joan Hart both said that your relationship on set, or on screen and off screen was, uh, pretty much the same. Is that true? <laughs> you guys might have been like hopped up on Pixie Six. <laughs> the contract stuff didn't happen uh, independently. We the the cast uh, in season three, I think it was uh, ninety two. Let's say collectively realized how bad we were going to get fucked because they have this you know recycling audience that that turns over their demographic moves out very quickly. So right. they can't just show the same episodes to the to a new crop of people every okay. five years. But then we also realized, oh, so they're going to use this, they're going to keep playing this, and they, we, didn't, we didn't properly negotiate, so. We tried to walk, hmm. and it didn't work. <clears throat> they, really? Yeah, they... Everyone? Was, yeah, the five of us. Um, wow. Please sing the lyrics to your favorite Explosions in the Sky song. They're all mixed up in my head. My ex-boyfriend would be so sad.